Strike one by Lindsay Lopez. Lopez, a transfer out of Arizona State, went to Washington after a coaching state, uh, coaching change with Arizona State. She has been effective for Heather Tarr, who has her work cut out for her to the right side, and Beta Coleman is safely aboard to lead off this game for the Sooners. Well, Lindsay Lopez trying to use that change up early against Jada Coleman, but Jada Coleman has such good hand-eye coordination. She is able to get to a lot of balls outside of the strike zone and flip them in for base hits. That's not the hardest hit you'll see off the bat of Jada Coleman, but she's able to lead off this game and give the Sooners a chance from the get-go. Ella Parker, one of two freshmen in this starting lineup for Patty Gasso who is in her 30th season at the helm of Oklahoma. She is the third all-time winningest coach so far, just passing Margie Wright. She is behind Hutch in Michigan and Mike Pandrea at Arizona. Both coaches retired. 0-2 now to Ella Parker. Well, Sid Sanders, or excuse me, Lindsay Lopez going right after the freshman Ella Parker. Saw a backdoor curveball, a curveball away, rise ball there. She's going to try to stretch the zone and see how far out she can get the freshman to chase. As you can hear, the Sooner faithful have traveled to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico to cheer on their three-time defending national champion Oklahoma softball team. And there is the first strikeout for Lindsay Lopez. That's the curveball away to a left-handed hitter. It's going to have a much sharper break than if a righty was throwing a screwball to these left-handed hitters. It's going to be a different look than what these lefties for OU's lineup have seen thus far in season. Still really early, but they haven't faced a left-handed pitcher with movement like Lindsay Lopez. Tiari Jennings to the outfield, and that'll be caught by Alana Johnson for the second out of the inning. Next up for the Sears third baseman, number 33, Alyssa Brito. Senior Alyssa Brito steps in as the number four hitter for the seniors, for the Spooners. Patty Gassa said we have 10 seniors and Brito is one of them. And she said she hopes fans enjoy them because they have just been amazingly talented bringing championship after championship after championship to Norman, Oklahoma. Brito, a transfer from Oregon as well after her freshman year, but came in, actually played left field at first in order to get in the lineup with the Sooners. Found herself in the infield last year, but this senior class is something special, and Oklahoma Sooner fans are in for a real treat as they send these 10 athletes out. Brito preseason, all Big 12 in 2024. She was a unanimous first team All-American last year. 2-1 count. Ball high out of the zone. Oklahoma has won 55 straight games dating back to February 24th, 2023. They own the longest winning streak in NCAA Division I history and have now tied the all-division record held by then Division II program, Western Kentucky. First walk given up by Lopez. And when you talk about the national scene for softball, especially Division I, OU hasn't just been good. They have been dominant. You talk about the stretches of wins. 
And there's been one win in there to break up what could have probably been a 100-plus game winning streak in both seasons. But that's just everyone is playing catch-up to the Sooners right now. Lindsay Hansen, graduate student. Batting number five for Patty Gasso Sooners. If you watch some videos about her, she is much into weightlifting. Says she might even want to be a strength and conditioning coach post-career. Loves to work out in the weight room. Well, they just had her mic'd up the other day and she said something about it being a light day and I'm pretty sure she was single leg squatting over 100 pounds. So she's going to be able to be an impact if that is into indeed the uh, avenue she goes. To the right side and that is through. One run will score and the Sooners have gone ahead 1-0 here in the top of the first. RBI for Kinsey Hansen. Hansen did a great job with that off speed pitch, just poking it right through the middle of the infield. Pickering had the Grand Slam home run in game one against Utah Valley. Let the faithful Sooners exhale. It was her first at bat in a Sooner uniform. Ball one. Lopez doing a good job, especially against the lefties, of getting ahead. But when she's trying to stretch the zone right now, it's getting a little bit out of control. You see that one almost get away from Stewart back there behind the plate. Lopez going to have to be able to rein in, stretching the plate in a quality manner as this game continues. Pickering fouls that off at a humble Texas. She was ranked the number four prospect in the class of 2022 by extra inning softball. Heavily recruited, but chose Oklahoma. To the left side, another run will score. 2-0, Oklahoma Spooners, RBI, freshman Cassie Pickering. Tracy, Cassie Pickering doesn't get in the box and swing like a freshman. She has some very veteran at-bats, not just the outcomes, but the way she approaches those at-bats. You talked about her grand slam, her first at-bat ever. She was in a 3-0 or a 3-1 count and still was able to put a really good swing on the first pitch that she swung at her entire college career. This at back gets down two strikes to Lindsay Lopez rather quickly, but still able to get a hard hit through that left side. Cassidy Pickering is going to be one of the best, the next big names for this Sooner lineup. Sid Sanders, ball gets away. And the runners advance for Oklahoma now with runners at second and third for Sid Sanders. Sanders, the transfer from Arizona State, facing her fourth teammate in Lopez. This was a team with Sid Sanders, Lopez, and Torres, which actually defeated when they were at Arizona State, UCLA, for the Pac-12 title. I'll show you how great they were. It was a year that Sanders was a first-team All-American. Who fouls that back? Well, 
I said Sanders was a freshman at that to be a first team All-American as a freshman. Just shows you what kind of numbers she put up. She was able to be the power threat in that Arizona State lineup. Lopez and Torres both were sophomores, but I remember Coach Ford describing Lopez as having that lefty magic. And to your point, Kat, Sanders hit 425 and 21 home runs in her freshman year at Arizona State. And she's the number seven hitter for Oklahoma, which lets you know how much power they have. The 3-1 pitch. Ball four. And the Sooners have loaded the bases here in the top of the first. The decision to go with Lindsay Lopez did not surprise me simply because, as I mentioned, the lefty on lefty matchup. However, you have to imagine Washington has Ruby Malin getting warm, ready to go to keep this game close. Lopez has thrown some good pitches, but there are some that are just so far out of the zone. It looks like she's out of control a little bit. You don't know if it's nerves facing the number one team in the country or simply just a little bit of timing is off. Alana Torres sends one to the outfield, and that will be caught by Johnson for the third out of the inning. But not before the rise that Oklahoma struck so quickly. I'm a little surprised. I really thought Lindsay Lopez might be able to keep the lefty hitters for Oklahoma off balance. Now, granted, it was the right-handed hitters that drove in the runs, so that lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup worked a little bit, but I definitely thought Washington would keep be able to keep them at bay a little bit longer. Brooklyn Carter leading off for the Washington Huskies. She was three for four against Utah Valley in the game earlier today. Carter chops it to short, quick throw to first. And Jennings hit Carter for the first out. Jillian Solis has moved up into the number two spot. The graduate second baseman transferred from San Diego State. Set to face Nicole May. You have to imagine Coach Char made that flip, moving Holtorf down into the third spot, hoping that more runners would be on. Holtorf was hot last game, allowing her to get more IBIs if she's in the three hole rather than in the second spot. And you think there's any thought to lefty, lefty, righty, righty, righty in facing May? There could be, allowing your lefty power hitter to follow Carter and know what she's going to see right off the bat. But then also, similar to OU, your power RBI produ producers are all right-handed. Now, granted, Nicole May being right-handed, it's not near as an advantage but also the left-handed Celis, if Carter's on, allows her to be able to bunt and sometimes even protect, protect for the steal, being in Kinsey Hansen's way out there in the left-handed batter's box. Well, that is the first walk for Nicole May, and that will bring up Riley Holtorf, the junior righty. So far in the Puerto Vallarta College Challenge, Oklahoma has held opponents to a 175 batting average. Seven hits, and all of them have been singled, while striking out seven. Coach Gasso calls Nicole May the matriarch of this staff, and she is. She is the senior. She has been at OU her entire career. So in essence, she has earned this start through her time. They did add two other pitchers through the transfer portal this year, Kelly Maxwell and Kinney from Liberty, both who will get innings as the season goes. But 
Nicole May going to be who they're going to lean on unless they're proven otherwise. Holtorf goes down for it, and that is caught by Jada Coleman. The All-American center fielder shows you why she's one of the best defensive center fielders in the game. Well, Jada Coleman goes all out all the time. Holtorf does a great job with that off-speed pitch. Looks like it's gonna, she's gonna loop it into center field. But Jada Coleman, the big plays are routine for OU center fielder. Sydney Stewart, the number four hitter for the Huskies, as they try to piece some offense together, the sophomore out of San Jose, California. And he will take first base as now the Huskies have two runners aboard here in the bottom of the first. You see Kinsey Hansen calming the Cole May down. That wasn't a bad pitch. But Sydney Stewart's elbows hang a little bit low. I'm not going to say over the plate because they weren't over the plate but they were enough in the river with that hit by pitch. It's questionable when you're with, with that bobble, quickly, Felice moves to third, and now the Huskies have runners at first and third with Alana Johnson, the sophomore, up at the plate. Coming into today's game, hitting 400 in the number five spot for the Huskies. More conversation Sydney's. in the circle. When well, you see Sydney Stewart signaling to Coach Tar that she got the call. I think Coach Tar probably also asking her, why weren't you running if Celis ran ahead of you? Two and zero to Johnston. Two runners on. Ball up in the zone to the left side, and the Sooners get out of the inning. And on to just get hit after hit with Brito, a huge two-run home run off Lopez in the third. May then retire ten of fourteen. And the Sooners won five to four, but the series again tied at 15 between these two teams is Riley Boone, the number nine hitter, in for the Sooners. Well, these two programs have both been at the top of their games for a long time. Coach Tarr took over Washington and almost essentially she got them back in the conversation. And we know Oklahoma's history, and with that, Riley Boone, another lefty, leads off with a hit for the Sooners. You see the speed of Riley Boone and the great soft touch in laying down the bunt. Stewart just not quick enough to get the speedy Boone, who is a leadoff base runner here in the top of the second. Jada Coleman singled and run scored as she'll talk things over with Coach Gasso. Patty Gasso has been electric in the world of softball. She is three-time defending champion coach, has really bought national acclaim to Norman, Oklahoma, 16 College World Series, 
23 Big 12 titles. They're building a new field. Love Field will open in just about two weeks at Norman. He's met with three different presidents of the United States, and there's another bun. Just a lot of history for the Oklahoma Sooners. And listening to an interview with actually JT Gasso earlier this week, they talk about how they pass that history down. Jen Stewart was around the field, around the program recently, and they were pointing at her at the, on the wall. She's the one who won the national championship in 2000. She was our first World Series MVP. So they let their players know who built the program, but also what the tradition has always been. And they find the athletes that are going to buy into continuing the standard. One and one to Jada Coleman. Fouls that off. JT Gasso, of course, is Patty Gasso's son, who is in charge of the hitting for Oklahoma. When we asked her what he brings to the table, except the obvious, and she said he's a great communicator. He is really Captain Science, she called him. He is into breathing, but he communicates with these athletes so well. And if you know he's anything done a about- tremendous job. You got it, Kat. Oh yeah, he's done a tremendous job. Chip McKay did a very good job prior to him and then JT Gasso was handed the reins. And it's not necessarily recreating swings, but he's a great, as Coach Gasso mentioned, communicating data and we can get into that more, but he's able to communicate to these athletes what pitches to expect and what counts. And that's where OU is very different. You see them adjust a little bit quicker based on counts and what a pitcher's tendencies are, I feel like, than other programs. But don't be fooled, though. He'll also tell you he's in charge of the outfield and he might actually love coaching defense more than he does the offense. Ella Parker with the runner on first and one out. Ball up. He worked under that for the second out of the inning. So two quick outs for the Sooners. Now batting the shortstop number 23, T.R.A. Jennings. T.R.A. Jennings. Looking for her first hit of this game, coming into today's game, hitting 600. It's funny you talk about. Go ahead. Great hitting. Uh, and Jennings is probably one of JT Gasser's best pupils. She just is a phenomenal hitter. And that's what I was going to say as well. She's just been a consistent hitter from the beginning and a lot of clutch hits. But it's the consistency that those clutch hits come at. They're not just sporadic. She has one of the best approaches of really pretty swing, but just has been able to be really consistent for this OU lineup. Ball high and to the outfield, and that is caught by Carter for the third out of the inning. Confident gel as a group. Other than switching them around in the order, she's allowing all of them to get there at bat. Coach Tarr and her 20th season at the helm of Washington. They won the national championship in 2009. Her 725 winning percentage is 10th among current Division I head coaches. Been very active with the national team for softball. And we were talking to her about what she's learned about international play that she can bring to the Washington Huskies. And she said, look, we could raise our game. Just when you think you're good, you see the international play, and we can all up-level our game at Washington. A 
And Coach Tar has been around the international game for a while, and she's had quite a few athletes that have played internationally as well. Victoria Hayward, who's on her staff now, has played for Team Canada for a long time. So a lot of different influences, not just from watching the competitors for Japan, but also having athletes that have been in program. This is how we did it. This is how you can do something different. Well, Nicole May gets her first strikeout. It is a big one in sitting down Jaden Glab. Now batting for the Huskies, or fielder number five, Avery Hobson. Today has been the story of the change-ups. We saw last game Utah Valley and Washington both utilizing the change-up quite a bit. Nicole May sits Glab down right there on a well-executed off-speed pitch. Avery Hobson, the senior left fielder. Transfer from Oklahoma State. Well, the Huskies 2024 schedule includes 10 teams ranked in the top 25, including Oklahoma. Of course, they'll see lots in the Pac-12 in UCLA and Stanford. They'll also face Oklahoma State and Nebraska. We are still waiting to see the fate of Jordy Ball, who was injured in her first game for Nebraska, leaving after 2.1 innings. Cats, any update to her status? Well, yeah, I saw um, on Twitter that they had actually released that Rhonda Ravel said it is her knee. They're going to treat it as serious until they get back to Lincoln. So basically, no way to evaluate it there in Puerto Vallarta. She is going to dress out, but we won't see her in games for the rest of the weekend. But it is her knee. Um, probably from the looks of it, it looked like she might have hyperextended it. But that knee injury is going to keep her out of the circle for the Huskers. So a big blow to Nebraska, but Avery Hobson wins that battle. The second walk given up by Nicole May. She's a one-out base runner here in the bottom of the second. Brooke Nelson, who was in the circle, started last game, then moved to first base and is hitting at the number eight spot, steps in. First pitch winging. That drops in. And the Huskies have runners at first and second here in the bottom of the second. I was going to say, Avery Weedler, the junior. First pitch swinging. Weedler, another athlete that's been part of the international game. She was on the junior national team during her freshman campaign. She hit 277 last year as a sophomore and was an all-freshman team in the Pac-12. As May gets her swinging. 0-2. Fiedler's incredibly athletic. She plays third for the Huskies. She has played shortstop at times. She can play almost anywhere on the field. Runners at first and second. Tried to get her to chase. Hansen to throw down the second is keeping Hobson honest. When you talk about her athleticism, she runs through the box there. You don't see Fiedler slap very often, but not seeing the ball really well, or maybe just trying to force some action, knowing that Hobson's quick at second base. Oklahoma fans want that here in Puerto Vallarta. Two and two now to Fiedler. 
Strike three called. The second strikeout for Nicole May. Second strikeout, second strikeout looking and on that changeup. Fiedler had a great eye on the pitch before. Granted, the OU's fans wanted that to be called. I did think it was a little bit outside, but that changeup was there. That has to be a pitch that Fiedler fights off in order to stay alive in that at bat. Brooklyn Carter. She flew out to shortstop her first time up. Carter's sister, Lauren Carter, plays for UCLA Athletic Family. She was a Pac-12 all-freshman team out of Inglewood, California. Grounder up the middle. And that will throw it, play the plate. And it looked like they're going to call obstruction and a run forward for Washington. So a delayed call by the home plate umpire who determined there, there was catcher obstruction by Kinsey Hansen and is going to award Washington the base to make it two to one. Jillian Solis steps in. First pitch play to the right side. Another one will score. Two runs will score. And the Huskies go up three to two here in the bottom of the second. Two RBI for Jillian Solis. As I mentioned, Tracy, the Huskies starting to swing early in the at bat. That was a change up to Jillian Solis, but she was on time with it, able to hit a hard ground ball off the first baseman as Santner's down there. But the Huskies starting to make noise early in the at bats and go back to the obstruction play on the hit before. Jada Coleman made such a nice throw, but Kinsey Hansen giving Hobson no place to slide to. Home plate umpire awards them their first run. Big break for that first run to the Huskies, but way to keep the momentum and keep driving it on. Granted, I don't think Hobson was going to be uh, guaranteed to be out. It was going to be a bang bang play. Jada Coleman made a throw right on the money, but I do feel like Kinsey Hansen was covering all of the plate that gave Hobson no chance to get any part of her body in there to possibly touch home. These are the first runs that have been scored against Oklahoma in this tournament. Riley Holtworth trying to keep it alive. She flew out to center her first time up. Two outs has been what Washington has been doing really well. In their previous game against Utah Valley, that was the difference maker. At one point, they were hitting 400 with two outs. Ended up hitting 444 in that game with two outs. Coleman gloves it for the third out. Load against Utah Valley for 13 runs in a five-run game. And then really keep Duke at bay, winning 3-0. This has been their first true challenge as Brito walked in her first at bat. The last two years, Six. OU has really gone on a run and been undefeated till late in season. And every time Coach Gasso talks about, sometimes losing is the best teacher. So games like this, she doesn't like to avoid them. She wants her team to be in situations where they're challenged, 
backs her up against the wall. And if sometimes it, a loss takes that sting is what has to turn them around, she's willing to, jump, to accept it. And what does she say in a lot of the videos you see is get comfortable with the uncomfortable. And she pushes her athletes till they feel uncomfortable. And that is oftentimes in situations like this where they've got a fight to come from behind. Brito, one of six seniors in this starting lineup for the Oklahoma Sooners. As Lindsay Lopez settles in, she's getting these OU hitters guessing just a little bit. She got Brito with a changeup for strike one, extends the zone with a rise ball there. That rise ball is going to be a little tricky because it is coming up and in as it's coming from the left side of Lopez. Lopez settled down in the second, gave up one single before three consecutive outs. 2-2 Two -two now to Brito. And that is ball four, check it was 3-2. And that is ball four. The third walk given up by Lindsay Lopez. Brito doing a good job of laying off the rise ball after she swung at it for strike two. But for Lindsay Lopez, that's almost the worst case scenario. You don't want to walk the leadoff, especially with Hansen and the hot hitting Pickering coming up in this inning. Hansen going after the first pitch, pops that out. And that is caught for the first up out of the inning. The hot hitting Cassidy Pickering hitting 800 coming into this at bat. Pickering just has you veteran approaches to her at bats. She's not swinging out of the strike zone. She's been able to take advantage of when she's in hitter's counts. You know you have to be good when Oklahoma has six seniors in the starting lineup, several out of the transfer portal, and you're a freshman who cracks the starting lineup and you're leading all hitters, batting 800 here in the early going. Well, you don't get as good as Oklahoma is by not being able to recruit. Coach Gasso obviously having the top recruiting classes year in and year out, which just shows the way her and her staff are able to convince elite athletes, yes, you want to win a national championship, but there are athletes on her roster that for the first year or two, they might not play as much as they would as another top program, but they come, they learn, they get better, they're ready to go. If you break the lineup as a freshman in Oklahoma, that's really saying something, Tracy. She was the number four ranked prospect in the country out of high school. You couple Cassie Pickering and Ella Parker in a recruiting class, and that's a lot of heavy hitting for four years. Second walk given up this inning by Lopez, and the Sooners have runners on first and second with one out. It is the fourth Lopez walk wanted that. overall. Lopez wanted that last pitch, but if there's a walk that might be an okay walk, it's right there to Cassie Pickering, not allowing her 
to hit the ball hard, allow Brito to advance past second base. Sid Sanders and Alana Torres are two hitters that Lopez is very familiar with, as you mentioned, Tracy, earlier in this broadcast, all of them having played at ASU together. Sid Sanders stepped in. She walked her first at bat. Out of San Marcos, California, her dad played minor league baseball for a number of teams. When Trisha Ford left Arizona State, so did Sid Sanders. She thought of Texas A&M, but she landed at Oklahoma. Of course, Trish Ford went to A&M. But it's tough to see all those championship trophies at Oklahoma and know that you have a chance to capture one, and they did just that last year. Two and one, former Sun Devil against former Sun Devil. This matchup has me questioning when they scrimmaged at ASU, what were the outcomes? Which one of them feels like they might have the upper hand? It, that's a great point because Sanders in her freshman year was just on fire. At, no one could stop her. Even Ferriamo and UCLA struggled to handle Sid Sanders and Lopez walking her the first time up just approaching her very cautiously. It's 2-2 against Sid Sanders. Right side foul. Well, when you're this familiar with a hitter, there are no secrets. Sid Sanders knows what Lindsay Lopez throws. She hasn't developed something new at Washington. And Lindsay Lopez obviously having faced Sanders, but also seeing her over the course of the last year knows what she's capable of, so it's really trying to outsmart each other. Can you not guess what's gonna be thrown? Can you throw a pitch that she wouldn't expect you to throw? That ball was up in the zone, and Stewart catches it for out number two. So a big out for Lopez. Elena Torres, another Sun Devil. Playing second base today for the Sooners. Steps in in the number eight spot. She flew out to right field her first time up. Torres swung at the first pitch, her first at bat. I would guess she's gonna be a little bit more patient, especially having watched two times through the order now how many balls Lopez is throwing to these Sooner hitters. Lopez has four walks and two and two thirds innings. Another former Sun Devil on former Sun Devil matchup. Right now, that changeup has been the most consistent pitch for Lopez. If I'm Oklahoma, at some point when I'm in a hitter's count, I'm going to start expecting that pitch because that's what they're using in order to get her back into the at-bat. Ball is hit well to the fence, and that is caught. A great catch by Brooklyn Carter and saves a bunch of runs. You saw Lindsay Lopez fist pumping and jumping on the mound as soon as that catch was made, but a great jump by Brooklyn Carter to save not just a home run, but three runs for this uh, for the Huskers, Huskies, excuse me. Sydney Stewart was hit by a pitch in her first at bat. You know, we talk with both of these coaching staffs and they equate pitching in softball much to 
like baseball. You use relievers, you use middle relievers. And with the depth that both of these teams have in the circle, you wonder how long they go with the respective starters as we start to turn over the lineup and they see Nicole May a second time. Well, and that'll be the question for Washington too as OU gets ready to come for their third time is when is Ruby Malin possibly gonna make an appearance? But Washington made an adjustment to May rather early. So you have to wonder if Kelly Maxwell's in the bullpen or one of their other five arms they have. They have Kirsten Deal, SJ Guerin, a number of arms to be able to rely on as season goes. He go? Yes, she did. Otherwise, it was ball four. So they got Stewart. Third strikeout for Nicole May. What a great execution on that pitch. Full count, rise ball. Knowing that Stewart's probably going to be aggressive, but out of the zone. Tried to hold up her swing. Could have been a leadoff walk for the Huskies. Instead, Nicole May, another strikeout. Alana Johnson flew out to third in the first inning. The scoring for Washington has re really come from the 7, 8, and top of the order. Johnson's got a lot of extra base potential for the Huskies. She's batting 333 coming into today's game. Sends it out to Jada Coleman, who gloves it for out number two. Glab to short, Jennings to first for the third out of the inning. Go so three up, three down for Nicole May. We're moving to the top of the fourth. We knew that this game was most likely going to be split between Lopez and Malin. It's about time. Lopez has thrown quite a few pitches. She's had a little bit of control issues in this game, so her pitch count got up there. OU is getting ready to come the third time through the lineup, so great time for Washington to go ahead and make a change. Ruby Malin is going to be who they rely on in the big games as this season continues. So what better way to get her feet wet in the 2024 season than right now to finish this game against the Sooners. And as you mentioned, it's the third turn for the Oklahoma Sooners. Riley Boone is getting her second at bat, but then the top of the order, Boone singled in her first at bat. To me, Boone is such an overlooked athlete down there in the nine hole. She does a great job of turning this lineup over, setting the table to allow Jada Coleman some free reign to not have to always get on base, but just not as talked about as some of these bigger names in this senior class. Boone is a preseason all Big 12. Ranks fourth in program history with a 4.05 career batting average in 181 collegiate games. There is the bunt and foul ball. Boone was a College World Series all tournament team. Boone, like so many slappers, have just incredible speed. And she's able to find her way on in a 
multi different ways. You don't see her swing away a ton. She can. But a lot of times she'll try to use small ball, slap it through the hole. Malin gets her with the rise ball. Right as I said, she doesn't swing away very often. There she goes swinging, and Ruby Malin able to record her first out. Jada Coleman had a single in the first, scored a run, flew out to short in the second. First time facing Malin this year, strike one. Malin's going to come in and just attack the strike zone. She will pound the strike zone, work ahead, and then try to stretch. Lopez tried to work around the strike zone, came in with her change up, and then tried to see if she could get the Sooners chasing. But Ruby Malin throws upper 60s. The speed will be a big difference from Lopez as well. That could play a factor in her favor for the first time through against these Sooners. Fouls that off. Malin out of Nebraska is a preseason all Pac-12. She's out of Omaha. Had an outstanding College World Series last year. Poor Washington had five strikeouts versus Stanford in the College World Series. Helped her earn third team All-American. That ball is swung on, strike three, and Coleman takes first base. So she is safely aboard, but we've got a meeting with the umpires. Kat Osterman, foul tip. What are you thinking? For her first hit in this game, one of two freshmen in this lineup today, Pickering the other. Goes after the first pitch. You see Parker knowing that Malin's pounding the zone, trying to be aggressive early. The key is to be on time and stay with that down pitch that Malin throws. She has a good drop ball and it's fairly heavy, so it's hard to stay through as a hitter. How difficult is it for a freshman like Ella Parker to pick up a lot of the movement of Ruby Malin? It's the combination of the speed and the movement. Ella Parker has seen some elite pitching as she came up in travel ball prior to coming to college, but now it's that movement and that speed plus being able to locate really well. So it'll take a little bit of an adjustment, but this is a hitter. She's elite. She's seen a lot of good pitchers. But part of it's going to be remaining calm, too, and not trying to do too much. Remaining calm. It's something that the Oklahoma hitters tell them. That JT Gasso professes, remain calm. Focus on your breathing. Slow the process down. She's in the hole 0-2 oh against Malin with a runner on first. Just outside. Yeah. Got her. Second strikeout for Ruby Malin. Coming with some low heat. Well, Ruby Malin saw Ella Parker chasing that drop ball. She was just barely getting it for foul balls and tried to stretch it for ball one, but went there again to make Ella Parker prove she could lay off it twice in a row. She could not. Big second out for Ruby Malin. 
and Malin challenges Jennings upstairs. Jennings has popped up in her two at bats. Jennings, one of the most dangerous hitters in all of college softball. She is a career 427 hitter with 73 home runs, 245 RBIs, and is second in program history in batting average, and Malin is challenging her. imagine that one Malin already knows everything Terry Jennings is capable of but the conversation with pitching coach Lance Glasso before she went out was if you're in this situation let's circle the hitters that we we're going to go at them but we're also going to be careful with them Malin's precision here early on is phenomenal I mean, the, the way she's hitting her spots, and, and she has to against Oklahoma because they make you pay. But she is that good this early. She is hitting some really good spots right now, able to paint the outside corner against these hitters and able to use the differential of her drop and rise to keep Oklahoma guessing. And they get Jennings again. Oklahoma put the runner on, but she's stranded. Washington is in their lead. And it is Avery Hobson who will set to lead it off here in the bottom of the fourth. And she will face Nicole May. Hobson walked and scored that run on the obstruction call. It was the first run pushed across for Washington in the second. They went on to score two more and lead Oklahoma 3-2. Oklahoma is out hitting Washington 4-3 and has left seven runners on base compared to the Huskies three. Chopper to the left side. Jennings can't handle it. And Hobson is aboard here, here in the bottom of the fourth. Now for Washington, first baseman number four, Brooke Nelson. Hobson having nearly identical games, walked her first at bat, both here against OU, but also against Utah Valley. Then has her infield single. Nelson to the left side, Jennings underneath. And grabs it for the first out of the inning. Now in the second inning, Hobson let off with a walk. Brooke Nelson swung at the first pitch and got a single. You have to imagine somewhere in that there's a conversation about giving Hobson time to possibly steal second base. The speed her and Carter have allows Washington to be able to run a little bit more freely. Granted, Kinsey Hansen is one of, if not the best catcher in the game. So the steal signal might not be given quite as much from Coach Tarr. Kinsey Fiedler struck out looking her first time up. Chopped it. Hit and run was on. Safe all around. Fiedler beats it out. And the runners are on first and second for Washington. Well, Fiedler is incredibly athletic and she used her speed on this one. Chopper right in front of the plate and Kinsey Hansen actually got out and fielded it well. Looked like she might have double clutched or had to re-grip before getting rid of that ball, allowing Fiedler to just beat it. 
Washington and having Carter up. A lot of speed. Brooklyn Carter. But Tracy, when we first thought she was going to change pitchers, it made sense. Kelly Maxwell being left-handed is who I would think they would bring in. You also have Kirsten Deal and S.J. Guerin, who are all lefties. So you have three lefties to choose from, and two lefties coming up in this order for Washington. Would have been a good matchup for her lefty pitchers. Well, she's letting Nicole May and her defense work their way out of it. Fly ball to the left side. That is playable and caught for out number two. Riley Boone loves it for the second out of the inning. Big out for the Sooners as Jillian Solis steps in. Police walked in her first at bat and then had the two RBI single in the second. Well, Washington getting a little aggressive, starting to swing first pitch because Nicole May has been pounding the zone. Now she's stretching it early. They have to rein back in, make sure they're focused in the in zone and what they can drive. Amazing the cat and mouse. When they're swinging first pitch, Nicole May then starts to throw it out of the zone. And then they're looking second pitch and she throws it out of the zone. So you're right, Kat Osterman. It has been just a game of cat and mouse between Washington and Oklahoma. Riley Holtorf on deck, the number three hitter. Good patience by Sellis right now. Stays two and two. Washington beat Nebraska 8-0. Beat Utah Valley earlier today 4-3. To they have outscored their opponents 12-3 to in the Puerto Vallarta College Challenge. They lead Oklahoma, the top-seeded team in the nation, 3-2, to with two runners on in the bottom of the fourth. This is a and very veteran at bat. Obviously, Jillian Sellis, a grad transfer to Washington, but she is proving every bit to be the veteran in this at bat here after going down 0-2 to Nicole May. Runners were going. They will go again. The 3-2 pitch, runners in motion. Yeah. Got her! Nicole May comes back and fights for another day. She holds the Huskies down. And now the Sooners get schedule. So if you can plan you it, you might as well. Yeah, you got priorities. Yep. Yeah. Top of the fifth, Elisa Brito set to lead it off against Ruby Maitland. I do think the interesting dynamic with Coach Patty Gasso and Coach JT Gasso is when you hear him talk about her, he does refer to her as coach, which I wonder how long it took him to say coach and not mom. He 
Petey and his brother DJ were always hanging out in the dugout when Patty started some 30 years ago at Oklahoma. DJ now with Arkansas after he was with Utah. Three and O to Brito. Great pitch. Brito there has Malin working the inner half. She's been working the outer half to these OU hitters quite a bit, but tucking it in there for strike one. Gets her to pop up. After down 3-0, and Ruby Malin fights back and gets Brito to pop up to second for the first out here in the fifth. That was a big out. Brito has walked twice, has been in control of both of her at-bats and looked like she would be there again. But Malin using that inner half of the plate. Yeah, you look at this lineup and it's like three waves of offense. Guys, in this wave, Brito, Hansen, and Pickering. With a walk, Hansen with an RBI, and then Pickering followed with another one. But you're right, Tracy, you can divide that, this lineup up into three parts and they all produce a little bit differently. You could see in the first two games, Patty Gasso kind of giving everybody a shot, but in this third game, the deck is definitely stacked offensively for Oklahoma. One and two to Kinsey Hansen. You know, you go to travel to Norman, Oklahoma, and you go in their bookstore, and on the top level, it's not football jerseys you see that they're selling, it's softball jerseys. Kinsey Hansen's number is among those jerseys that's being sold. And they do su such a good job of emphasizing women's athletics and the softball team in that bookstore. It's almost like the entire first level is softball. Yeah. Got her upstairs. Ruby Malin throwing some high heat and gets Kinsey Hansen upstairs for the second out of the inning. Ruby Malin did such a great job of pounding the bottom part of the zone. Drop ball in, drop ball out. Tried to stretch the drop ball a little bit and then surprises Hansen with that rise ball to get right three. A great sequence and great execution by the sophomore Ruby Malin. Very impressed with how she's come into this game and been able to execute. Going right at the freshman Cassidy Pickering. I do like the tempo and the poise of Ruby Malin. Obviously having a year under her belt of experience, but works at a good pace, 
and really hasn't flinched at all on close calls or any possible situations of trouble. One and two to the freshman Cassidy Pickering who hit a grand slam home run in her first collegiate at bat against Utah Valley. She is down one and two against Ruby Malin. Sid Sanders on deck. Yeah. Got her! Ruby Malin, back to back strikeout. Her fifth of Riley Holthorff set to lead it off for Washington. High heat, strike one. Well, Monticelli is going to come from the right side just like Nicole May, but she throws upper 60s, can hit the 70s. A lot of upspin, but she's been working with Coach Rocha on her command. The ability to control the strike zone and repeat pitches was something that they went to work on this fall after she transferred in from Wisconsin. Monticelli, just a sophomore, hails from the state of Wisconsin, Peterburg, Wisconsin. As you mentioned, Pat Osterman, a transfer. Six foot one inches, throwing high heat. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Holtorf. Ball up to the left side. Jennings will call for it for the first out of the inning. Cat Osterman surprised that Monticelli has come in given the depth in the circle for Oklahoma or makes sense because they've got so much to throw at Washington. It makes sense in the speed differential of Monticelli from May is, is significant. May is a lower 60s, spins the ball really well, where Monticelli's upper 60s to 70s. I would have thought we would have seen someone with a little bit more experience come in behind May for this game. But at the same time, Coach Gasso has always done this where she has young pitchers and she will put them in just at the right time to get them enough innings in pressure situations to get that experience that they can build on. That being said, Kirsten Deal, who is set to be the, the heir apparent after this season, would have been another one I could have thought they would have gone to if they didn't go to Maxwell. But nonetheless, here we see Monticelli and so far so good. Ball low in the zone. Monticelli went seven and four with a 2.71 ERA for Wisconsin last year. She led the Badgers in strikeouts with 82 over 80.1 innings. Walked just 21. Boy, that was a good pitch, but they will call it ball three to Sydney Stewart. This is a good pitch. Stewart's off the plate, though, so she's running that ball just a little bit inside off the plate to where it is a ball. 
what the OU fans have been disgruntled a couple times today on some of these pitch calls. But overall, I feel like the home plate umpire has done a good job and been fair both ways. She's worked a full count. Monticelli against Stewart. Ball up to the left side. Center fielder Jada Coleman will call it and gloves it for out number two. Well, here is where you see the speed of Monticelli being the difference maker. She's throwing that ball in the inner half to the Washington Huskies, and they're not able to get on time with it. They're a little bit late, so they're getting jammed for these easy fly balls and shallow outfield from both Holtorf and Stewart. Johnson's going to have to make an adjustment and try to get out in front of this a little bit more. But so far, the switch to Monticelli has paid off. Alana Johnson sends that foul. How much Ducat do you feel? Hey, this is a pitcher who was in the Big Ten last year with Wisconsin. Washington really hasn't had a chance to look at her. Not a whole lot of tape on her, at least inside Pac-12 circles, or at least in NCAA this season play circles. So, hey, why not just throw her there and see what she can do? She's got to be effective. And right now, she is doing the job for Oklahoma. She is. She's doing an exceptional job. And for Coach Gasso, too, you have to think about not just the future of this season, but the future moving forward. They go into the SEC after this year, so there's not going to be any games come conference time. And Monticelli is going to be on the staff for three more seasons. So she's going to have to be able to throw against high-powered offenses. And right now, doing a really good job of being able to control the strike zone, something she was she struggled with a little bit as a freshman. Well, she's got a lot of poise right now, taking on Johnson. The 2 1 pitch. Check that. That is strike three. Three up, three. That to face Ruby May. For Oklahoma here in the top of the six. Sid Sanders walked in her first at bat. Popped up to the catcher in her second at bat. Has home run power. Malin. Trying to control the most powerful offense in the nation in Oklahoma. They came in last year batting a team 366. Their 117 home runs more than doubled any team in this Puerto Vallarta tournament. The way the Sooners have been able to put up runs for the last couple years has been so impressive. And there have been very few pitching staffs that have been able to slow them down. But so far tonight, the combination of Lindsay Lopez, she gave up two runs in the first, but then she threw two scoreless. And now Ruby Malin, who has been executing almost to perfection, has kept Oklahoma at bay. And Sid Sanders has worked a hitter's count. It is three and one. Sanders up and foul. Well, they say Sid Sanders' dad would help her with her hitting when she was a young athlete. A former Major League Baseball player helped her learn how to drive the ball, hit with power. Here's the 3-2 pitch. The 
so far this season. It looks like Smith Sanders will be a mainstay in this lineup for Oklahoma. Her and Ella Parker can push off at first base. Also have the advantage of putting Hanson or Stewart at first if they need to and giving them a rest from behind the plate. Ruby Malin came in to spell Lindsay Lopez. She has faced seven batters. She has struck out five. We'll go back to the full count against Kid Sanders. And she walked it. Great battle right there. A big walk for Sid Sanders. Great pitch by Ruby Malin. Just a tad inside. That walk gives Oklahoma life. It's going to take Ruby Malin and the Washington defense to break this momentum because you give Oklahoma an inch, and a lot of times they don't just take a mile. They take three or four miles. Well, that is the first walk given up by Malin. Kid Sanders will likely give way to a pitch runner. And that'll bring up Elena Torres. Torres, as we mentioned, also a transfer from Arizona State, as is Sanders. Pitch runner at first base for Oklahoma, number 12, Maya Bland. Maya Bland will pitch run for the Sooners. The freshman out of Argyle, Texas. Torres hitting 500 coming into this at bat. Ruby Malin against Torres. Long fly ball. And that is caught. Tagging is Blands. And Blands will move up to second base on the long fly ball by Torres. Great hustle by Hobson to get over there and make that catch. Ludlam is a graduate student out of Fort Myers, Florida, a transfer from Furman University. Ludlam, one of the premier catchers that entered the portal in the offseason. Oklahoma looked poised to have a deep catching staff, but Lindsey Elam took off to Tennessee and Jocelyn Erickson then jumped in the portal and ended up at Florida. So Patty Gasso having to grab a catcher who could give Kinsey Hansen a break as season goes on. But Ludlam now getting her chance to get in here and swing the bat in such a close game. Both Ludlam and Kinsey Hansen are six foot. They have a lot of power. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Up the middle. Here comes the runner. And we've got a tie ball game. RBI, Riley Ludlam. You 
open the door for the Sooners, and they are going to come plowing through the leadoff walk by Sid Sanders. Gave them the only momentum they needed. Big pinch hit right there by Riley Lidlam. This is a tie ball game. And the top of the order is coming up. Nada Coleman, who is the heartbeat of this lineup, has a chance now to add to the run total for the Sooners. So Jada Coleman with the runner on first, trying to keep on the pressure against Ruby Malin. The adjustment by the Oklahoma hitters. They've started to become more patient with Malin. Coleman one for three on the night. Deep fly ball in that single are the two hardest hits that OU has had off of Malin. Malin needs to settle down just a little bit, find her rhythm again in order to get out of this inning. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Jada Coleman. Up in the zone, to the left side. Just out of the reach of Fiedler. That could be well, a big break for Oklahoma. Kat, we talked about how much of an adjustment it is to get used to new fields here in Puerto Vallarta. It's just the third game for both of these teams, but still getting used to the field and how much foul territory there is. Jada Coleman has new life. A 2-2 count here in the top of the six. Oklahoma has pushed across one this inning to tie it. There is a runner on first top of the order to the left side and safe all around check that they're going to call her out it look has struck out twice but still has a runner on first here in the top of the six patty gasso not done making changes How much of that do you think is a change and how much of that do you think is telling the umpire, maybe we want to reconsider that call, although they won't, but I'm sure. Probably a little of both. She's putting in a pinch hitter here, a right-handed hitter, to take the place of Ella Parker, but at the same time, probably letting the home plate umpire know that she doesn't agree with that call either. That is Hannah Kaur in the pitch hit. Core, the redshirt sophomore out of Yorba Linda, California, Esperanza High School. Got her going up high. Fouls that off. Core played in four games on opening weekend last season before sustaining a back injury that sidelined her for the rest of the campaign. 
In 2022, she appeared in 40 games primarily as a pinch runner. Her Getting junior season in high school. Here. Yeah, 618 hitter as a junior in high school. Malin with high heat. The Gaden Glab set to lead it off here in the bottom of the six. The question, Tracy, will be if Washington can respond. How do they respond in the bottom half of this inning after OU tying it up? Last inning, Monticelli got pop-up, pop-up, and strikeout to the three, four, five hitters of Washington. She now takes on the freshman. She walked in. Well, we saw the leadoff walk in the top half of this inning be the difference maker. Can the Huskies make it be the same for them? The Huskies have scored three runs on four hits. They have stranded five. Oklahoma has scored three runs on five hits. They have stranded eight. Both teams have used two pitchers. Pinch runner for Washington, number 33, Jing Gardner out of Seattle, Washington. The freshman will pinch run. And a big spot here against Washington. She will face Avery Hobson, who scored Washington's first run. After she walked, she came home on what was an obstruction call, called against Kinsey Hansen. It allowed the first Husky run to push across. They added two more in the second. They led Oklahoma until the top of the sixth when Oklahoma got one. Chop to the left side, they'll go to first, and they get the shore out in Hobson. And Gardner moves to second base. Great job by Hobson to get enough lift on that ball. Got it to hop high enough to give her runner a chance to get a couple extra steps where Brito couldn't make the lead play. Now Washington has a chance to take the lead with a runner in scoring position. Brooke Nelson has been a hot hitter for the Huskies. She's batting number eight in this game, hitting 429. She's one for two in today's game. You mentioned Keeney coming from Liberty, which is coached by former Olympian Dot Richardson, which made their way to the NCAA tournament. Richardson, a former standout shortstop and second baseman for UCLA and the Olympic team. You would think she would teach her pitchers how to play defense. Well, I'm sure she does. A lot of times, though, pitchers are just a little more tentative. But I'm sure Keeney has been pushed both at Liberty and OU to be able to be another infielder and not just a pitcher and only fielding what's in your view in front of you. 
Guy Richardson is very close friends with Patty Gasso and her family. And it is great to see Keeney get life here at Oklahoma. Full count to Brooke Nelson. Runner on second in scoring position. And that will fall in. The runners at first and third here in the bottom of the sixth for the Washington Huskies. Nelson's second single of the day. And as Hansen looks to the dugout, we may have yet another pitching change for Oklahoma. As the number nine hitter, Fur had a 1.58 ERA and struck out 746 batters over nearly 500 innings with Oklahoma State. She's got runners at first and third, one out, and she will face Kinsey Fiedler, the junior lefty. First pitch, they go home. Got her! And Washington, Brooklyn Carter, kind of looking at the home plate umpire, saying she got in. And here comes Heather Tarr. It's the out called. It's up to Brooklyn Carter for Washington with two runners on and two outs. Facing Kelly Maxwell. And here, Tracy, is that lefty-lefty matchup that I thought we might have seen earlier in the game. Got to be a quick play. Got her! So Oklahoma gets out of the jam thanks to Kelly Maxwell and some great defense by the Sooners. We are not at a three. Previously, it's a different situation when they're coming to the end of the game and a game was a th is within reach. The Oklahoma Sooners, one of the most resilient ball clubs in the country. It's how they've won three consecutive national championships. Seven championships spanning the course of two decades. Strike one to Jennings. This is Tiari Jennings' second at bat against Ruby Malin. She flew out in her first at bat early in the at bat, so we'll see if she's patient or if she decides to be a little more aggressive in her approach. To the left side, glove by Fiedler, and they get Jennings. Well, they got Jennings all four times in today's game has Washington, and now the number four hitter, Alyssa Brito, 0 for 1 in today's game, walked twice, popped out to second in her last at bat. In my opinion, Alyssa Brito is one of the best hitters at adjusting at bat to at bat. She walked twice against Lopez, was jammed against Malin the first at bat, but I have to imagine that she's ready for that inside pitch if Ruby Malin to go there, go there again. I've seen too many times where the pitch that got her out in her previous at bat, she then not only hits it, but hits it incredibly hard in the following at bat.
And just like that, right back up the middle on cue. Brito is a one-out base runner here in the top of the seventh. Well, Brito didn't hit that inside pitch. She didn't crush it, but she hit it hard enough to get it through. Oklahoma with the go-ahead run on base. Ruby Malin going to have to be smart. She did strike out Kinsey Hansen and Cassidy Pickering back-to-back -back in the fifth inning. Hansen jumping on the first pitch, pops it to third for out number two. Big situation here for Oklahoma's freshmen. Although not a pressure situation after the way she started her career. Her approach and her swing is very much like a veteran. Pickering, one for two on the day. She came into this tournament, hit a grand slam home run in her first at bat. She's got an RBI in this game. The 2-1 pitch, right two. Great job by Ruby Malin to be able to back to back the exact same pitch. Pickering missing the first one, but taking that one, but Ruby Malin just really hammering the zone, not changing until she has to. Great drop balls right there by Malin. They get her upstairs, Ruby Malin. not lost the game since February of 2023. Gillian Talese, strike one. The graduate transfer at a San Diego State is one for two against Oklahoma. Silius has the big third RBI for Washington in that second inning. She did strike out in the fourth against Nicole May, but this lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup, Kelly Maxwell so good in these situations. She's ahead of her one and two. And Cecilia's taking big hacks here against Kelly Maxwell. Bottom of the seventh, Washington just needs a base runner any which way. She doesn't have to leave the yard and win this game on one swing of the bat. In the dirt, Hansen picks it up, the throw to first, and they get her by a step. Well, there so you see Maxwell. the big swing by Silius was overpowered with the changeup, or I should say underpowered. Silius was taking big hacks. Kelly Maxwell went with an off-speed pitch in the dirt. And a great job by Hansen to get it to first in time. Riley Holtworth, the number three hitter. has yet to get a hit against the Sooners. Maxwell takes the signal from Hanson.
grounder, and that will fall in. Kolturf gets her first hit of this game, and it comes in the bottom of the seventh. Holtorf was so hot for Washington against Utah Valley. Are you able to keep her under wraps until this inning? And really, that's just a ground ball that squeaked by Brito. But if the Huskies can capitalize, they can walk off. Sydney Stewart has yet to get a hit as Hansen throws to Sanders at first to keep Holtorf close. Stewart yet to get a hit. Boy, wouldn't she love one here. Maxwell tries to go upstairs. She did not go. This is the fourth pitcher for the Oklahoma Sooners. May, Monticelli, Keeney, and now Maxwell. Ball four. And the Huskies have runners on first and second here in the bottom of the seventh with one out. there was a hitter that I was going to focus on as a pitcher, it would have been Sydney Stewart. Yes, she is in the four hole for Washington, but she does not have a hit on the day. Even going back to the Utah Valley game, an, ath an athlete that's not seeing the ball incredibly well. Kelly Maxwell unable to find the zone. But again, the angle we have and the angle they have there are a little bit different. First pitch swinging. I, I agree with you, Kat. From our vantage point, it looked like it was a clean hit down third, just out of the outstretched hand of Brito. But either way, Huskies have two runners on, and they're threatening here in the bottom of the seventh. Well, the other piece of that equation, Tracy, is a lot of times you play in international, and the dirt's not the same as what we play on in the state. And that is Brito who gloves it and gets the force at third for the second out of the inning. Great job by Brito to cut that off before it got in the hole. Able to get back to third in time. If that ball gets through to the five, six hole. The only play Holtorf probably has is at first base. Heather Tarr looks like she's re-entering Jaden Glab, the freshman, who gave way to Jean Gardner, the pinch runner, in her last at bat after she walked for Washington. So Jaden Glab re-enters. And Maxwell goes to work. Big hack there by Jaden Glab. The 1 1 pitch. Ball on the outside. Senior Avery Hobson is on deck. Behind her, hot hitting Brooke Nelson. She goes upstairs and Glab chases it. The 
that's the situation that as Glab continues in her career, knowing you're ahead in the count, you can zone in on one zone and up in the zone is not what you're really looking for against Kelly Maxwell. Kelly Maxwell with two runners on. And Sid Sanders up at the plate. You mentioned it, Tracy. Sid Sanders was the beginning of that rally for OU to come back and tie this, force this game into extras. A leadoff walk. Eventually, her pinch runner came around to score. But she was very patient. Two walks today. She she's going to force Ruby Malin to prove she can throw strikes. You get the feeling Sid Sanders is trying to drive something. You just saw her take that last pitch and buckle her knee with a runner in scoring position. The 1-1 one, one pitch. I love the way Ruby Malin and Coach Lance get Glasso sneak that rise ball in there. Ruby Malin has a great rise ball, but she's been predominantly down in the zone. But every now and then she'll sneak that high rise ball up in there. OU seeing it, gets excited. A couple really good swing and misses on that for Ruby Malin. She snuck that in there for strike two on Sid Sanders. See if she uses it again in this at bat. Back up the middle. Malin doesn't check her. The throw to third. Not in time. Ball is dropped. So Pickering is now at third base, 60 feet away. And Sid Sanders at least does her job moving Pickering to set the table for Torres, who in the third inning had a long sacrifice to center field. I almost wonder if Malin forgot there was a runner at second because she never once looks over her shoulder. Pickering realizing that Ruby Malin's not checking her took off as soon as she pulled her arm back to throw. But if Ruby Malin checks her, I'm not so sure Pickering advances to third on that ground ball. Torres steps in. So close, so close. Ruby Malin's been using that drop ball, trying to nibble at the bottom part of the zone. Home plate umpire, though, not budging. Strike called. The Oklahoma Sooner faithful, they travel everywhere to see their Sooners. Torres. Ball three. Torres being extremely patient with Malin this at bat. Torres has proven has the ability to get to the ball to the outfield off the bats today. She gets under it, ball to right field, the throw, and that is going to hold Pickering at third base. Two out for the Sooners. Riley 
Riley Boone comes back in and re-enters the game after Riley Ludlam pitch hit for her in her last at bat. So with two outs, a runner on third, Boone has a chance to push a run across. Goes after the first pitch. That hit Stewart right square in the mask. I see Ruby Malin checking Stewart and Stewart saying, I'm good, I'm good, I promise. But Riley Boone, so aggressive on that first pitch. Stewart saying it with a smile, but Malin just making sure her battery mate is okay. But you're right, Boone coming out swinging. Boone is one for two on the day. Stewart is okay, she gets a hand. Cassidy Pickering is on third, two outs. We usually see Riley Boone try to play small ball, run through the box, but she's standing in, going to take her hacks against Ruby Mayo on this attack. And that hack worked. It's a 4-3 ball game, Oklahoma. Go ahead, RBI, Riley Boone. Ruby Malin staying on the outer half and Riley Boone making the adjustment. You saw her pull off it just a little bit that first pitch. She stays on it that time, drives that to left field. She gives OU the lead, but most importantly, passes the bat to Data Coleman. The top of the order for Oklahoma. The number one team in the nation, three time defending champs. They went out to an early lead and Washington responded. It was a 3-2 ball game until Oklahoma pushed one across in the sixth to tie it at three. Washington threatens in the bottom of the seventh but could not push the runs across. Here in the eighth with the international tiebreaker rule, Oklahoma has pushed the first run across and they've got Riley Boone on first and the top of the order, Jada Coleman up, trying to add on more. To the left side, that is playable. And Hobson will catch it for the third out of two eight wins. Unless again, it's a tie ball game. So on second base, We'll go Aiden Glad. And Avery Hobson will face Kelly Maxwell. Hobson's done a really good job of putting the ball in play today, has a single to shortstop, ground ball to third base, but with her speed, if she can get it in play, there's a chance that she's safe as well. And she moves the runner to third. So Glab moves to third. Hobson is the first out of the inning. And that will bring up perhaps the hottest hitter for Washington this game. Brooke Nelson. Two for three, batting 500 for the tournament. First pitch swinging. Brooke Nelson has been aggressive early in the count, all three at bats today. I'm curious to see how OU pitches her. Both of her hits are to the left side, line drives to left field. 
Kelly Maxwell tends to stay outside to right-handed hitters. Nelson's going to have to either adjust and try to go oppo or up the middle or really get around a pitch with the speed of Kelly Maxwell. That's hard to do. And Kelly Maxwell is ahead of her now in the count of two. Heather Tarr talking to Jaden Glab. She would be the tying runner. Nelson would be the go ahead, but Maxwell is ahead in the count. Nice off speed pitch there by Kelly Maxwell, trying to see if she can get the aggressive Nelson. Two and two to Nelson. Maxwell goes high again in the zone and Nelson goes for it. Will she tag? She will not. Chorus gloves it for the second out of the inning. And Oklahoma is one out away from the come from behind victory against Washington. That was a huge second out, keeping Brooke Nelson in the infield. It is up to Kinsey Fiedler, who is one for three on the evening. And then it's the top of the order for Washington with Brooklyn Carter on deck. Can they get to her? Maxwell against Fiedler. And it was the same situation for Washington. The nine hole up with two outs. Riley Boone came through. Or excuse me, for Oklahoma. Now Washington hoping that same magic can happen for Fiedler here in the nine hole with two outs. She did not go two and one now to the junior Kinsey Fiedler. The freshman Glab on third. Maxwell going to work. to the left side. Loved and thrown the first, and Oklahoma comes from behind to beat the Washington Huskies four to three. 